In the last video we looked at how to look at the difference between a cost of goods sold and another expense and whether a particular expense was one or the other. Well, that's actually not the point of all this. The point of all this is to make a report called the income statement which shows our profit. So the real point of being able to do that is to put the expenses in the income statement. So just to summarize, we've learned that the expenses of the business will either be cost of goods sold or other expenses. So if it's an expense required to get the inventory from suppliers to our business, and it's incurred in order to get inventory in a condition and location ready for sale, the key word being ready, not sold, or not to get it to the customer, just to get it ready for sale, it will be a cost of goods sold. And we will see things like cost of sales, delivery in, packaging, buying expenses, customs duty, but we'll also see anything that meets this definition. This is not a, you know the, the very definitive final list. There could be other things that go in there. Now, if it's not that, it's gonna go over here. So we say to get it ready for sale. So if it's not required to get it ready for sale, the inventory ready for sale, we're gonna put it here as an uh, other expense. And a good way to think about that is it's all the expenses to run the business and get the inventory from our business to the customer. So we could say another expense are expenses incurred in running the business on a daily basis and or getting inventory from the business to the customer. So there we'll see things like rent, delivery out instead of delivery in, so delivery out to the customer. Packaging could be either, we'll look at that, uh, advertising and wages. So we could think of this section as the everything else section, the other section, and we'll put all the other expenses that aren't required to get inventory ready for sale. We're gonna call them other expenses and put them in this section here. And in the last video, we looked at a few different expenses. Well, let's relook at those and say, now we've got to put these expenses in the income statement. So the first thing in the income statement will be revenues, and we'll deal with the income statement a lot more in the next chapter about how to put it together. So we don't need to be experts on this part yet. We just need to know where uh, the next part, so in terms of where will we put all these expenses. So once we put the revenues in, we're then going to go and say, well, all these expenses we've got will either be cost of goods sold, or we'll put them down here in other expenses. And just for the sake of this video, we're leaving out a few things like sales returns. We're not going to put those in here and we'll leave out inventory gain, inventory loss and so on. So for now, we're just going to say, let's get all these expenses here. And you can see there's quite a few. Just take them one at a time and go, would that be a cost of goods sold or another expense? So let's take this one, the cost of sales, the cost price of the inventory sold, 100,000. That will always be a cost of goods sold. You cannot get the inventory ready for sale unless you pay for it, and that is what the expense cost of sales is. Wages, the wages of employees to work at the business and sell the inventory. So this is not to get inventory ready for sale, this is to actually sell it. So we're gonna put wages as another expense down here. Customs duty, the expense needed to import inventory from overseas. So a lot of our inventory comes from overseas. We get it sent to Australia, well, we can't get the inventory ready for sale unless we pay this, so that would go here as a cost of goods sold. The rent, the expense paid to occupy the premises of the building. So I guess you could say that's required to run the business and get and sell the inventory, but it's not required to get the inventory ready for sale, so we're gonna always put rent down here as another expense. Buying expenses, the expenses to buy inventory from suppliers. This is a vague one that maybe don't tell us what it is, but it would cover things like having to pay for software that the supplier wants us to use um, each month to buy from them, for example. So we're gonna always say buying expenses, you can't buy the inventory and get it ready for sale unless you incur these. So buying expenses will always be a cost of goods sold. Marketing, or it could be advertising, but we'll just say that the cost incurred to advertise, promote, and sell the inventory. So that is not required to get inventory ready for sale. That would go down here as an other expense because it's required to actually sell it. Then we've got two deliveries. We've got delivery in, which could also be called freight in or cartage in, something like that, and delivery out, which could be freight out, cartage out, and so on. But one is to deliver the inventory into our business from the suppliers. So I can't get inventory ready for sale unless I do that. So that's gonna go as a cost of goods sold. But then we might sell a product and then have to deliver it to the customer and we incur an expense in doing that. So when we do that, that expense to deliver inventory out to customers is not required to get the inventory ready for sale. That's once we've already sold it. So that would always go as another expense and we maybe change the name of it to delivery out. Packaging, we got packaging twice. One was charged by suppliers to package the inventory so it can be delivered to our business. So for example, if inventory comes on a pallet and the supplier charges us for those pallets, that would be a cost of goods sold because that is required to get ready inventory ready for sale. 
But sometimes packaging could be, once we've already sold it, gift bags, wrapping paper, boxes, and so on. We've all had that in the shop. Well, that, you know, they cost money, so businesses incur an expense with all that stuff. That would actually go as an other expense. I call it a packaging out. That's not really a term we would use, packaging in and packaging out, just to demonstrate the difference here, though. But th this expense here, the gift bags and so on, that's incurred once the inventory has already been sold. It wasn't incurred to get the inventory ready for sale. And then we've got two insurances. We've got one to insure the building that we operate in. That would be another expense. So we'd say insurance of property because that's not required to get the inventory ready for sale. Maybe we have separate insurance, which is our insurance of the delivery of and storage of the inventory. And that's a pretty common thing that most businesses do. You know, it's unlikely to happen, but if the inventory got damaged on the way to our business or once it's there, that is required, you know, that does happen. So we want to have insurance to cover that. And that would actually be a cost of goods sold. So I guess the point here is that the thing, something with a certain name, whether it be delivery, packaging, or insurance, could either be a cost of goods sold or another expense. You just need to go, is it required to get the inventory ready for sale? In which case it'll go up here and cost of goods sold. Or is it not required for that? Everything else will just go here and other expenses. And we'll be experts at this later, but for now, we just finished this income statement. We total up our cost of goods sold here in the second column, and we'd say that will equal our gross profit. And then we total up our other expenses here, and that will equal our net profit. Um, there are other sections, like we said in another video, adjusted gross profit and so on, sales returns. But yeah, for now, this the point of right now is just to go, well, is an expense going in the cost of goods sold section or the other expenses section?